Okay. I'm going to show you where you can find Antigone because we'll be working on characters from Antigone for part of our play and also your play critique so that you can make an appropriate uh, written document regarding watching your video. So I'll share my, uh, one thing is people who were trying to figure out how to get both their images up. If you share your desktop, you'll be able to see your whole thing and you can go between two different images on your desktop. So under course resources, which is here in modules, course resources right here, you will find some of your top requested resources. Here are the blank schematics. So if anybody needs those, here they are. Here is a play that you can read. And here is a trailer for it. And here is an animated play summary that you should look at because it'll help you read the play. We'll just look at this quick um, trailer. I want you to, you can look at this final makeup information, but we'll get to this document. We'll talk about it in depth. So don't worry about it and see it and freak. So here we go. Let's look at the Antigone trailer. This is a different one, I think. Oh no, it's the same one, sorry. So you'll see this one twice, Cara. We looked at it today. So this is a French version, but you can see what happens with this Antigone. And let me see if I can just get my stuff out of the way here. Okay, so this is a trailer for part of this play and we will be doing it contemporary. So this is a good feel for this play. Enlève ta veste. Regarde ici dans la caméra. Bon, tu as le droit de faire un appel. Puis ici, on a une liste des avocats pour la jeunesse. Non, merci. Mais tu devrais appeler tes parents. Hein, si tu veux que quelqu'un assiste à ton interrogatoire. Okay, so that came out last fall. And that's found on your course resources page. And then this, we're not gonna watch the whole thing. I'll just show you the beginning and it's very fun and it gives you the entire plot of the play and it's very easy to watch. Hey, my family is uh, my wife, my daughter, my eldest son, my middle son and uh, our youngest son. I guess we can't and I am Roger, <laughs> father. Dad, that's all you have, you know, is your family. Nothing stronger than family bond. So Sophocles wrote the ancient play Antigone in 441 BC. The play begins with Antigone speaking with her sister, Ismene. Antigone wants help from Ismene to bury their brother, Polynesis. Antigone repeats Creon's decree that anyone who attempts to bury Polynesis will be stoned. Creon is the new king so his threats are real. But Antigone can't sit idly by while her brother is food for the vultures. She feels compelled to bury him, yet there's no way Ismene is going to help her. The thought of being stoned to death petrifies Ismene. Ismene reminds Antigone that they have already lost so much of their family due to the curse of Oedipus. Ismene doesn't want to lose Antigone as well. Unfortunately, Antigone makes it clear that she is not going to budge. Antigone is determined to bury Polynesis. When Ismene realizes she can't change Antigone's mind. So uh, what you want to do is you want to look at this over the weekend and really understand the plot. So I'm sure that will even help uh, Colby. 
So it's right here under your top five frequently requested resources, okay? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm just getting this stuff off. <laughs> no problem. I'm screen sharing, so I can't see you. Here's the trailer, and here's the animated version, and here's the play. And then I want to go to the modules and talk about the assignment for the play critique or the play performance report, which it must be down here somewhere or I haven't. Oh, okay. So see, this is why I have to look at these things. Where is the play performance report? Usually I put it right into the course guide, this resources. And I don't think I sent it in your announcements. I saw it just um, a few minutes ago. Um, okay. So here's the where you get your ticket. So if you don't have your ticket, get it there. And I can look in assignments. Let me just go here to modules and all. And I can just put it in here. Makeup execution and let's just put it right here. Play oh, yeah, in the announcement about where we get the ticket. And here it is right here too. So I'm putting it right here. It was, it's in your assignments. So this is, actually I wanna put this back up. So we'll go to this for a moment. And you just click on it. It's worth 50 points. It's worth the same as a midterm. It's one of our written documents. This says 25, but don't ignore that because it is 50 at the bottom down here. This, is, oh, submitting, see, that's why I have to do this because I don't have a way to submit. Okay, very good. So it will be online as a file upload and you're going to give it to me in my usual box PDF. You can also do a Google. And it's even though it's open, it was been open since the 23rd. It's due the 25th, but it stays open until the 31st. You can add that. You can upload it until the 31st. So I want to talk about it just for a moment. Here's the criteria, you will not have a ticket, right? What you're going to do is type this out. And I don't care if it's double spaced actually anymore. So you can keep it, this is single spaced. But if you do that, make sure it's at least 12 font or 11 points so that it's big enough to read. And it should be based on what you see and experience. Title the page. So the first part of it's gonna be the title of the page, looking forward, looking back. What, what was the theater space? So you're watching it and you'll say, I'm watching it on my computer and the performers are in this kind of a space and then describe the space. Like, does it, is it a proscenium space? Do you see a stage? Are they on the front of the stage? Are they on the back of the stage? The name of the play, the date you watched it, and you, and actually a couple of you did work on the play. So you want to indicate if you worked on the play. What is the overarching theme of the play? What does that mean? What do you think that means, you guys? This is not a trick question. What how, it's, it's, how it's relevant in today's time. Okay, that's one way to do it, sure. And Kara? What it's about. What it's about. So that's also true. And what does the, what does the, hold on a sec, let me just do this. Have a little bit more of a discussion. Where did I move my silly screen share thing from? Here we go, I'm so far down, let me move you up. So if we're talking about theme, We're not talking about that kind of thing. Really? 
what does the playwright want the audience to get out of it, right? What is the meaning? What are some meanings? What's the playwright telling the audience? What's they, what are they trying to tell you? What are some things playwrights can tell audiences? Why do you go to the movies? To entertain you? Yeah, so entertainment is one thing. What else? Hi, everyone. Okay, Christine. Misdirection. You go to the movies for misdirection? Yes. What does that mean? Misdirection is see something that's there that really isn't. Okay, so they're trying to fool you. Yes. Okay. So maybe they're trying to fool you into thinking something that isn't really happening. What else? Or comment. Go ahead. comment on society. Sure, a comment on society. Mm. Or a comment on exactly where we are at this moment in time. And maybe they just want you to have fun. Maybe it is in what Christine, this is what I was trying to get to you. Maybe it's a distraction from your everyday life. So it can be a distraction yeah. from your everyday life. I do have a question. Is it about the play report? It's about the BI. Okay. When are we going to take it off? You can take it off anytime. If you've taken your picture, go ahead and start soaking it and take it off while we're having our discussion, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, I thought that was clear before. So you can go ahead and take it off. So what is the playwright telling the audience in this particular moment? Remember, this is an original thing, but it will be familiar songs. So it's, is it for entertainment? Is it to provide a distraction for everyday life? Are you having fun? Is it commenting on something about today's society? And then once you decide that, I don't know why it didn't go right back. Here we go, it did go back. So what is the overarching theme of the play? Uh, the playwright's trying to do X, Y, and Z. And here's how I think they're doing it. This is how I feel. This is how I feel watching this. This is how I felt. You know, maybe you feel great. Maybe you feel uplifted. Maybe you feel reflective. Maybe you're feeling nostalgic. Maybe you're remembering things. So think about all of those things that come into your mind when you're watching the play. What is the environment in which the tape play takes place on the stage? How did the set design illustrate the meaning of the play or set the physical context for the story? So what does it look like on stage? What about the lighting and sound effects? And there are there is definitely some lighting and there's definitely some, some uh, stage design going on here. So you want to think about that. How does that help whatever your decision on the overarching theme of the play is? Comment on the acting style. This really is a limited acting style because you'll, first of all, I'm not going to tell you, but everybody has a very specific area in which they stand. And that's something you want to bring up because there's some things that relate specifically to today. And does one actor fully embody a particular character? And we have a couple that you can really relate to on that. Did the makeup and hair help define the character or any character? And did the costumes help you understand the character? Then how did all of these things interact for the best meaning of the play? So that's a typed document and you can find that right on your modules now. So I want you to type that up and upload it. Okay, I look forward to seeing those and see what you think. Now, have fun with it. It was fun doing it, wasn't it Colby? Yes, I'm very, yeah. I'm glad we could get something off the ground that everyone can see. Yep, and now we're gonna talk about our midterm. 
So have your Antigone read. I'm gonna completely revise the last part of the class so that we have, we take out this one day that we're screwed up and we figure out what we're gonna do. And we don't get overloaded. In fact, I might reduce part of the work. So midterm on Monday. Normally I make this very rigid. Like you're going to do a second animal, not the species that you've done. And you will incorporate all of the learning techniques that you have used. It's a practical midterm. Let's go around the room. Tell me a technique that you've learned. Colby. Shading. Shading. Okay, Amy. Um, I don't know if this is like a correct one, but like how to use white. <laughs> white, yeah. And whether that's for hair or whether that's for highlight, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, the use of white. That would be something excellent that you could put in. Okay, a technique, Christine, that you've learned in makeup that is, that is something that you could incorporate in your midterm. I was thinking of a word that I remember. Precise. Is that, is that a makeup technique? What I'm asking for is a particular makeup application or technique that we've used to create character. <laughs> what would one of those be? One of them me was intricate. Did you say intricate? Yes. Okay. So that's something that's complicated. Um, I see you removing your makeup. What I'd like you to do is get your brush wet, put it on there and hold it. Don't try and drag it off. Just use, get a lot of the material on so that then you can, and let it dissolve. Remember the adhesive dissolves. It does not pull off like tape. Okay. All right. Uh, Cara, what's one of our techniques? Uh... I'm trying to think how to describe it, like aging. Sure. So I don't know, is that too general? Aging, and maybe what that is, is um, line control. Uh, and it's contrast, right? That really is a study in contrast and line control. And of course, the big part of it is wrinkles, eye bag, and skin texture. So all of those things, those are, I mean, look at how many things we have, we've discovered and we've played with already. Significant, it's a significant, and that's why we build up to aging because then we are able to have the dialogue and we understand what each of these things means. Okay, what else? Ida. Another uh, Did anyone say highlighting? Well, you've got highlight up here. Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> what else? Okay, I'll just say uh, crepe hair. Yeah, hair application, absolutely. And that's something that is a technique that may be incorporated and certainly could be incorporated in certain kind of animals, right? Hanson, what's another thing that we've talked about? From my design class, you should know this. Okay, how about color? Um, right? Color, we start with both skin tone, we can start with one color next to another. We start with how to do color on top of another color or layering. 
and whether that's layering just black and white or layering in color so that we can put down, like think about clown, we can put down one base, we can remove and we can put color on top, right? So that's another thing that we learned. We've learned about powder and how to possibly use uh, cornstarch to create invisible or transparent, trans, uh, transparent powder, right? So all of these things go into creating your next makeup on Monday. And I'll put these all into a document and I'll create an assignment. Um, you can choose what you wanna do. So I'm going to say, we're not getting into any three-dimensional techniques. This is our midterm before we start three-dimensional. So it could be an animal. It can certainly be aging. It, which could also include hair, animal could include hair. What else could it be? Uh, it can be an alien. Really, and what we wanna think about is that you're creating a character and a scenario. Well, that this, the story or the scenario fits the character in whatever one of these things that you want to do. So if you want to read Antigone and you wanted to pick a character from that, you could totally do that as well. Watchmen. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Colby's in that play and he's playing Watchmen and he's playing Ismene, Ismene. So it might be something interesting to think about, um, you know, does he have a tattoo? Drawing a character on, the, drawing a specific thing on the face that emblemizes this person as a watchman of the guard of the Greek. So, and I'm intentionally not giving you the research that I've done on that, but it's something to think about. So again, we have, we have our text Antigone that you can work with. We have any project that we've worked with. If you wanted to do extreme runway model, you absolutely could do that, <clears throat> right? That would be extreme. Because some That's of the runway me. models, you know, they use really wild makeup. So I will give you all of these. I'll put it into a document. Remember, this is 50 points. So it'll be broken up into 25 points of preparation for your schematic, your character analysis, your scenario, your notes and recording, and your reference images. This will require four, and then 25 points for your execution. Will you put all of this in an email? I'm gonna put it in an assignment. Okay, thank you. It'll be in an assignment and it will say 50 points and it will all be in there and I'll put that in there today. Okay, so just, you can make sure, Monday. just to make sure I'm clear because it seems really vague. So we can pick whatever character we want as long as it shows off some of the skills we've previously learned? Correct, correct. You want to show off these skills and you know, pick the ones you're good at. But not all of them. You don't have to use all of them. Okay. You want to make a very dramatic statement, whether it's a dramatic runway model, a dramatic animal, a dramatic alien, a dramatic uh, character that you're creating a scenario for. So this is your first real designed <coughs> character. Okay? Do we need uh, for our assignment? Do we need like inspiration pictures? For yep, you? four. And I'll, you'll have a rubric, the same thing. Okay. Same like same, okay? I'm gonna take a picture of it so I don't leave any of it. Bones <sighs> like a volcano. Okay, questions? Sounds like fun? It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. 
Pamela? Yes. I'm going to choose the one way model. You're going to, great. So you know what I'm expecting? Intense one way model. Four excellent research pictures. Now, your research pictures do not need to be human. So if you're doing something like a runway model, you might be getting a color inspiration from a particular kind of plant, right? You might find a flower that's just like, this is amazing. And now half of the face of the runway model is gonna be this flower. Or I'm yeah. gonna pick that color. Yeah, sometimes I uh, get inspired by wildlife and just do fashion from that. Exactly. It is wide open. You can use any sort of reference. And I encourage you to use um, references that are non-human. Human or non-human. So they don't have to be human to have, uh, they don't have to be human so that you don't want to, you don't need to necessarily make a human statement. You might want to use, like you said, wildlife to create a picture of something. Yeah, I already have four wild animals that'd be perfect for a runway model. So just think about what it is that you want to express. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of things so that you can see these some of these crazy runway models just for fun. So, you know, here's some runway models. Here's some runway models. I gotta go because I have rehearsal, but um, I'll see you next week. You're out. Thanks. You know, here's some runway models with crazy down things and crazy makeup. Here's one. So if you wanted to do something like this is extreme, it's, it's creating another three-dimensional thing on your face. So I'm just saying, have fun with it. I will type it up so that it can be as explicit as possible. And you can do, I will give you some suggestions about what, about what to do so that you don't have to be limited to that. And if you, if you have a question, just send me an email. Okay. All right. Everybody has recovered. We're all back to our normal faces. Almost. Everyone gets a sticky face. Great job. Okay. See you on Monday. Bye. Bye. Good job, everybody. Outstanding day. Thank you.